Hi, everyone. This is D with D's Divine Tarot 411, Stars Near Me, and Eclectic Life Works. And so I'm going to continue on with It's Written in the Stars. And uh, this is part three. And so this is Superstar Superheroes. And this is all about Batman, Superman, Wolverine, and Thor in the movies. And, you know, I had their comic books too when I was a child, but we're going to get into the movies. And so for Batman, Batman was really cool to me because <laughs> I started off watching Batman and I think it was in the 70s, possibly. I didn't check that, but it was with Batman and Robin. And when I was watching it as a kid, it was in the 70s. And so I always loved that series. And then when they came out with Batman, with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson, I really fell in love with the series. I mean, with that movie. And that was 1989, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to show you who all of the characters are in the sky. So we'll start with Gemini. Anytime you have coupling, Batman, Vicky Vale, Bruce Wayne, Vicky Vale, Batman and the Joker, Batman and the Commissioner, whoever it is is coupling. So that would be Gemini, and those are the twins. So anytime you have twinning, you know they have, or multiples of the same person, you know that's Gemini. And so Batman is actually Orion with the combination of Taurus and Auriga. So that's his cape is Taurus, and he's the man. Uh, Orion is known as the man, even in his myths from back in the day. We even did the one I got about Orion. So a lot of the times the backstory tells you who is who. But that is the combination of Taurus, Orion, and Auriga for the Batman. And also the Joker is also Orion. So they're playing like double duty, and that's another Gemini hiding because you can also tell because of uh, the Joker's hat. A lot of times if they have a round hat or a top hat or something like that on or a crown as a king, you know, that's how you can tell, you know, who is who. But yeah, the Joker is also the fool, which we decoded in the tarot. And that is also decoding for Orion. You can see with one hand up and I mean, one arm up and one arm down and how one is out. That's the same thing Orion is doing. So that's the Joker. He also is the full card in tarot. Now, um, Batman's Batmobile, that would be Mona Saris. So in a lot of myths and a lot of old tellings, Mona Saris can be a horse, which is actually the constellation Mona Saris is. It's a unicorn. But in this telling, they made it his Batmobile. And so it's amazing how they encode and layer things in movies and logos on cars and restaurants. But now we're getting into the movies. Also, uh, if you want to get more information, go to our channels, Eclectic Life Works. It's a lot of meat of information there. And then Stars Near Me, we even have beginner courses to help you out. But all in all, the bat signal would be... <laughs> Taurus and Auriga, so Taurus would be the bat wings, the bat and the bat wings, and Auriga, that would be the bat signal, so that circle of Auriga, that's the bat signal, and then the bat is actually Taurus, so, so his uh, emblem, the bat emblem, that's Taurus, so we're going to keep it moving, but also Vicki Vale and Bruce Wayne, they're lovers, so that encodes for the lover's card, and that's Gemini as well. And Vicky Vale is actually playing Venus. So all in all, we're going to keep it moving forward. And we're going to get into Superman next. Now, I love Superman. <laughs> and I just think they did a really good job. And uh, uh, this, was, this came out in 78. I think they did a really good job with this movie. And I'm just going to show you who Superman is in the sky. And so uh, Margaret Kidder, that's Lois Lane. Gene Hackman, he's Lex Luthor. And so, you know, they did an awesome job with the movie. And still to this day, you can watch it and it brings back that nostalgia of it. But uh, Lois Lane is actually Venus, just like Vicki Vale to Batman. Um, their parents, you can see the two sets of parents, that would be Gemini. Um, he had parents that, you know, raid like he was born to and then parents that um, 
he was adopted by. And those are the Kents. And then you can see the coupling with uh, Superman and Lois Lane. They were lovers in the movie. And well, Clark Kent wanted to be with her, but she loved Superman. <laughs> and then you can see Superman as a baby, that would be Cetus and Pisces. So uh, when our, and this goes back to like our, our ancestors. So when the ancients looked up and saw Cetus, they saw angel, an angelic baby with wings and the wings are Pisces. So what Superman is encoding for is actually the eye of Ra. And if you look to the bottom of the screen, we show you the difference between the eye of Ra and the eye of Horus. And so uh, the eye of Ra is with the sun. That's what the yellow is for Superman and, and his emblem. And then, you know, if it's the moon, that would be the eye of Horus. And so they're always encoding in the movies what's going on in the sky. And there's a scene where Lois Lane dies in the movie and Superman turns back time. So he's time traveling to bring her back to life. Well, what they're telling you is about daylight savings time. And so is a phenomenon that actually happens in the sky during both times of the year, fall and spring for daylight savings time. So at daylight savings time in the fall, the time falls back, but things in the sky jump forward. So if you were to actually be outside and see the stars, you would see the stars move forward while the time falls back. They actually jump forward. It's like a glitch in the sky that happens. Same thing in the spring. That's why it's daylight savings time because it's like a time travel for the stars above. And in the spring, everything, uh, well, the time springs forward, but everything springs like jumps back in the sky. It's an amazing, amazing thing to see. If you don't have the time or the ability to get up at 12 o'clock at night or two in the morning, whenever we change the clocks back, then you can do it on uh, Stellarium and you should be able to see what happens in the sky, that glitch where everything is jumping forward or jumping back, depending on the time of season it is. Next, we're gonna get into the villains. They are actually the Eye of Horus, those in the black at the bottom, and they're also portraying Gemini. So coupling, tripling, anything like that, that's gonna be about Gemini. And so, it's a blessing to be able to do that. Even uh, Superman's emblem, that's how I got to see, oh, this is the Eye of Ra. I originally originally thought it was Pisces, but as I look deeper, I see more than just Pisces because you can see the two fish, uh, one at the bottom of the S, one at the top of the S, but then there's like a snake eye and that would be encoding for the Eye of Ra. And so even to the left, you can see that like rectangle shape that is actually Aries, the eyebrow. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see the eye of Ra and the eye of Horus. The eye of Horus is the moon. The eye of Ra is the sun. So all in all, I think we did a good job. But Lex Luthor is actually the same thing. He's also the eye of Horus. And I've never seen that. I usually only see like one eye of horrors per movie or story. But in this, they got him bald and he wears wigs. So him being bald would be Cetus. You know, they always got him in a collar with a tie. That's also Pisces. And then um, at other times you can see like his, like they show his wrist during the one where he's holding the uh, kryptonite. And that is encoding for the eyebrow of Horus. So, I mean, the eye of, uh, the eyebrow of Ra. So you have to look really close, but in every scene they're showing you, you know, giving you hints, but we're no wiser to it because we're not, we don't know what to look for. We just look at the movie and see it as it is. But you can even see baby Superman right there. <laughs> and like I said, our ancients looked up and saw Cetus as a baby, uh, like, a an angelic baby with wings, Pisces would be the wings. And so that's what uh, Superman's cape is, is, you know, Pisces. And then his two fish when he's flying, you know, those are his fists are the two fishes. And so it's amazing how they do this. And then there's a scene where Superman 
is holding the train tracks up for the train to pass. That's also encoding for the eye of Horus. The train track would be the eyebrow, his face. Anytime you see just a headshot, that would be Cetus. And then his cape would be Pisces. So they're encoding for all three constellations there. And just to know that both of them, Lex Luthor and, Lex Luthor and Superman, are <laughs> the eye of Ra. And so is their boss, what he's wearing with the newspaper he's holding and his tie that's showing for the two fishes, the collars Pisces. And, you know, his eye, his eyebrow, he has one cocked up and he's short. Anything short or small or hunched down or hunched over, that's seated. So all in all, they're telling us, but it's only hitting our subconscious. But if you learn the stars, you get to see exactly what they're showing. And then his arch enemies at the bottom, again, they're the eye of Horus, and Superman is the eye of Ra. Okay, so we're going to keep moving forward. Even Daily Planet is Cetus and Pisces. <laughs> and then the eyebrow would be Daily Planet, <laughs> the words going across it. So it's amazing. And then we're getting into Thor. Uh, we're not going to get too far into Thor, but I should just let you know Thor's dad, Odin, is Orion. And then the crown that he wears are the bull horns. That's Taurus. And I have Thor and Loki covering up the horns, but you can go back to Batman and see the bull's horns or the other video that I did about Taurus. And so all in all, Loki is um, Aries. And it took me just a little bit to do some digging to find out who Loki was because uh, they show him as the trickster god. That's what they call him, the trickster god. And I'm like, who's the trickster god? And so I just winded up um, Googling, like, what Zodiac is known as the trickster. And then I came to find out that is, they had Aries, but I had already seen them with ram's horns. And so I was like, oh, he's Aries, but I didn't have concrete proof until I looked up who the trickster was in the Zodiac, and then it popped. And so uh, Thor himself is Pisces, and I had to do some digging for that. And how I found out was they're talking about sacred, he's tied to like sacred groves and trees, that sort of thing. And so I'm like, sacred groves, what's that? And so that would be like woods and trees. That's always Pisces all day. And then he's blessing weddings and this sort of thing. So there was a religious aspect and that's all about Pisces, which is the year of our Lord Jesus. So all of this is mythology, and if you do a little digging, you can find out who was who in these movies in the sky. And then you got Loki and Thor, that's Gemini, those are brothers. Their father would be Gemini with each brother. So it's just that sort of thing, like they're encoding things in the sky in times of the year in every movie, like daylight savings time, it could be you know, April Fool's Day, leap year, it could be the solstices, winter or uh, summer solstice or the equinoxes in the fall and the spring. They're always showing us what's going on in the sky because they're tying all of this, every story to, you know, the Gregorian calendar. So that's the slick thing about it is the Gregorian calendar and all of it being tied to it and things that are in the sky happening at that time, even with the release dates of movies. And so now we're going to get into Wolverine and the X-Men, and I'll show you who was who <laughs> in the X-Men. I wasn't planning on doing it, but I got into it and I was like, I wonder who was such and such. But Jean Grey, she was easy for me to figure out because I know she's the Phoenix and the Phoenix is tied to Scorpio just the same as um, Wolverine. So as a, we're going to get into the east and west side of the ecliptic, and then that green dividing line, that would be the north-south meridian line. Keep in mind, all the planets, the sun, the moon, and the zodiac constellations, they rise in the east and set in the west. So above the horizon is heaven. And so this is like 12.15 yesterday, <laughs> uh, quarter after 12. And so that's who um, Wolverine actually is. He's playing Scorpio. And you can see the claw, the three, the three claws. And then if he has the sword, that's the stinger at the back, the tail of, 
of Scorpio. Now you can see um, Storm, she's actually, she's like a hint to Isis, uh, she's Taurus. And then Nightcrawler, he's also Scorpio, just like uh, Wolverine is. And Wolverine is played by uh, Hugh Jackman. I think he did an awesome job in um, the movie. And they just, they got him pumped up for that movie. <laughs> and so his, uh, the person that made him with the animanium skeleton and all of that, that's Stryker. He's also Pisces. He's known as Reverend Stryker. <laughs> so as soon as I knew he was a reverend, I'm like, oh, Pisces. And Rogue, she's a virgin. She can't have, like, relations with anybody. Uh, so she would be the, the virgin Virgo. And so that's the constellation she's playing. And then you got uh, Sabretooth. He's Pisces. And so you can tell by the claws and the teeth and the long hair, all of that encodes for Pisces because they can take that shape or that form. Then Jean Grey and Cyclops. Cyclops would be Orion. We even talked about Orion being the one-eyed god. So if you want to see that, go back to Eclectic Lifeworks and watch that. But i got to save time. This is already running over what I wanted it to. <laughs> but, yeah, Jean Grey is the phoenix as well. So... You can see the X-Men would be the X at the top of the screen where uh, the claw is. And that's basically the north-south meridian line and the east and west, the dividing line. That makes an X in the sky or a cross. And so that's where X-Men comes from. And then Mystique, she's also Orion. She has regenerative powers just like Orion with his left eye. Okay, so we're just going to keep on moving. I think we covered everything on the X-Men side of things. And next we're going to just do a bonus. Uh, this will be a bonus feature <laughs> coming up. But first, let me explain the underworld. So I just showed you everything above the horizon that is heaven. So anything under the horizon when everything set, that is known as hell. I know we got religious things in our mind about heaven and hell, but in actuality, they're saying hell is when the sun sets, the planet sets, and the zodiacs all set and go under the horizon. And so this is after midnight. And so we're going to get into these bonus features. Can y'all think of any other superstars or superheroes or characters in movies that represent Scorpio? And so I came up with two others, and I'm just going to show you who they are. It just cracks me up of how they use these stars and these constellations and the planets right in front of our faces, and we're none the wiser to it. And all of this is happening during a new moon. We just had a new moon, as you can see, right under that S for bonus. So Freddy Krueger, <laughs> he is also Scorpio, and he is in hell. He's in the underworld, under the horizon. So is Elm Street. <laughs> so all in all, this is what they're encoding is Scorpio and what's happening with Scorpio during a time of the Gregorian calendar. And Scorpio is the fall time right before winter, you know, and one, two, Freddy's coming for you, <laughs> three, four, now <nine. laughs> lock your door. And so another one here is Scorpion, get over here. And so I played a lot of Mortal Kombat and what they're showing you is the spear that he throws that is also encoding for Scorpio, um, the constellation. And he has a sword as well. And that would be the stinger of Scorpio. And so they're always encoding us. And so the yellow of him would be the sun in the underworld. Like I said, it travels like from above the horizon down to um, the underworld. And so that's the moon, the sun, the planets, and also the zodiac. So in every movie, every story, even video games, cartoons, they're all telling us a story with another layer that we're not hip to and that we're not seeing. So this all goes, remember this goes back to a time of writing, symbolism, you know, we, this was before writing, so we used to sit outside and we used to look up at the stars and tell stories, and we also used those stories for navigation, so we would remember if we left home how to get back home or if we're going somewhere, 
we would know how to get there through navigation. And a lot of the stories are told to be very rough and raw, so you remember the story. But all in all, this is a blessed gift. I hope you all enjoyed it. It's like a blessing to be able to decode movies and all kinds of things now and stories. And so these are the modern day myths of our time. And so to be able to share them with you and show you who is who and what is what in superhero stories and in movies from back in the day is really a blessing to me. And I'm very thankful. I hope you all learned something from it. I know it's a blessing to me. Thank you for your time and your attention. There's much more to come. Blessings, y'all.